everyone, Charmaine and Kathy from Charmaine and Kathy's Road. Bonjour, nous sommes ici at Le Chateau de Chenonceau. We are here at the Chateau de Chenonceau, which was a hunting lodge for the French nobility. We're gonna go to more chateaus and aren't you impressed with her French? I am, it's rather sexy. We will see you later. The areas outside of Paris are filled with amazing sights. Today, we will tell you about three of those sites we recommend. The Chateau de Chenonceau, the Chateau du Clos where Leonardo da Vinci spent his last days, and the famous Palace of Versailles. Scattered throughout the Loire Valley, 130 miles from Paris, there are more than 300 chateaus. They were built in the 1500s and 1600s by French nobility as hunting lodges and summer residences, places to get away from the hustle and bustle of Paris. Some were destroyed during the French Revolution, that was 1787 to 1799, some are now owned by the government of France, and some are still in the hands of private citizens. It's a very tough choice to pick the chateau or chateaus you want to visit. We wanted to see a chateau that was famous and furnished, so we chose Shannon So. Next to Versailles, Shannon So is the most visited chateau in France. Shannon So was built over the Cher River on the foundations of an old mill between 1514 and 1522. Over the centuries, the chateau has had a long list of owners, from queens to king's mistresses to French royalty to a Cuban millionaire. In 1913, Henri Meunier acquired the chateau and his family still owns it. They were famous French chocolatures. Today, when you tour Shannon Show, you'll find it filled with beautiful period furniture, elaborate tapestries, and stunning works of art. Admission is 1550 euros. That's about $17 a person. There are beautiful formal gardens. There's a tiny cafe on the grounds where we shared a lunch of vegetable soup with baguettes, coffee, and small slices of lemon cake. That evening, we stayed at the Chateau de Peru near Rambois. This lovely hotel is being carefully restored. We enjoyed the views from our guest room and the beautiful grounds. We took a grassy path on the property into the small woods where we found tiny wildflowers and a small creek among the trees. The next day in Ambois, we stopped back at L'Orloge Bakery for breakfast. Excuse my French. We had picked up some snacks for our hotel room there the night before. We liked it so much, we went back for coffee, shared a cheese panini, and bought a pont du chocolat for me and a flaky apple tart for Kathy. Near the bakery, Ambois has lots of charming shops and cafes to visit. We next toured Clos Luce, the home of Leonardo da Vinci from 1516 until his death in 1519. Admission was 18 euros, it's about $20 each. At the invitation of the French King Francis I, Da Vinci arrived from Italy in 1516, bringing with him the Mona Lisa, other paintings, and all his manuscripts. We walked through Da Vinci's bedroom, his dining room, his studio, interactive exhibits, and rooms filled with designs and models of his inventions. You know, we think of Da Vinci as an artist, but he was also a tremendously ingenious inventor, a botanist, an engineer, a scientist, and an architect, a multifaceted genius. It's absolutely fascinating to realize that many of Da Vinci's inventions, which he designed in the early 1500s, were not produced until centuries later. Clos is located in Da Vinci Park and has beautiful grounds that you can wander around with gardens, a meandering stream, and small bridges. On our way to Versailles, we stayed overnight in Chartres so that we could see its famous cathedral. We arrived just before closing, so we quietly walked around while they were having mass. It's a beautiful church with gorgeous stained glass windows and long walls of intricately carved sculptures. The next morning we were off to the Palace of Versailles, just 12 miles west of Paris. Since Versailles is visited by an estimated 15 million people each year, you need to book online for a scheduled date and time window. We came off season so the crowds were a little lighter, but still a significant amount of people were there. 
While we waited for our afternoon time slot, we found a wonderful boulangerie and had coffee and treats. Are you sensing a pattern with us? Versailles and its gardens are on a 2,000 acre plot of land. The palace itself has 2,300 rooms and it was the home of the French kings from Louis XIV to Louis XVI. Admission is 1950 euros per person, that's about 2150. The estate was first established by Louis XIII as a hunting retreat back in the 1600s. During the French Revolution, Louis XVI was publicly executed by guillotine in January of 1793. His execution marked the end of the aristocracy in France. Ten months later, in October of 1793, his wife, Marie Antoinette, was also beheaded. She was only 37 at the time. Part of the momentum behind the French Revolution was the excesses of the French kings and queens and their families who lived in luxury while their people starved. Versailles stands as a testimony to those excesses. With its massive number of rooms full of art and sculptures, its elaborate gardens, the royal apartments, a chapel, an opera, and multiple salons. After the French Revolution in the 1700s, Versailles was closed. Its paintings and sculptures sent to the Louvre and all its furnishings and equipment sold at auction. As the palace has been restored over the years, many of those original furnishings have been repurchased at considerable expense. The Hall of Mirrors at Versailles is famous because the formal treaty ending World War I, the Treaty of Versailles, was signed here in the hall in 1919. We're in the Hall of Mirrors. At the Palace of Versailles, and it's amazing. The artwork, the gold trim, the marble, the furnishings, just overwhelmingly beautiful. Super yes. crowded. Yes, to resistance. It is, and the, it's crowded, but you know, and I don't like a lot of crowds, but this, this palace is amazing. Between 1925 and 1928, American philanthropist and multimillionaire John D. Rockefeller became intrigued by Versailles. He gave them $2.2 million, the equivalent of about $30 million today, to restore and refurbish the palace. Various construction projects through the centuries have continually helped to restore the palace, and it became a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1979. The gardens at Versailles are a magnificent example of the French formal garden style. We visited on the last day of March, and it was too cold and windy. So windy that we couldn't use this video clip. Nothing was blooming anyway. But when the equestrian competition for the Summer Olympics in 2024 is hosted here, we know those gardens will be beautiful. So we really appreciate if you press like and subscribe to our channel. Also, you can follow us on CharmaineandKathy'sRoad.com or Instagram and Facebook. Again, thanks, thanks for, for watching. watching.